Hello and welcome back to another game dev tutorial. This is John Stayskull from Lost Relic Games and today we're going to be making a small tutorial focusing on how to shoot bullets in Unity. So I've got a little scene open here with a few basic game components. The player, the main camera, the background, the floor. So it's all very bare bones so I encourage you to follow, follow along. I'll make all the assets available in the description so if you want to jump down there while you're down there, please do like and subscribe if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future. It really helps. And I did do a, a much more in-depth version of this recently, showing on how to make a full player controller and moving around and jumping. So if you want to learn how to rig up a full 2D player controller, then I encourage you to check that one out. So in this scene, we've got a few things already going on. If you click this guy and in the animator, you see I've already got an idle animation and a shoot animation. I've got a sprite sheet here that I've already set those up. So we're gonna just focus on bringing the bullets on screen and firing them off. So the first thing we'll wanna do is create a player script for our player component. So I might just move this. Yeah, so down here, if you with the player selected, click on add component and we'll go new script and we'll call this one player script create an add. So if we double click on that, it will open up in Visual Studio. So we've got nothing going on here, just the update function and the start function. So the first thing we we'll want to do is create um, just two properties here. We'll want to have a reference to the animator and an object reference to the bullet, which will actually I'll save that for later because it's part of the more of the bullet creating. For now, we'll just try to swap between the animations using um, mouse click. How's that sound? So we'll say animator equals get component. I'll say animator. Cool. So down here in the update function, we will listen for the mouse click. So I say if input dot get button uh, get button down. Wow. Sorry about that. And here we'll listen for the reference of fire one. So fire one is a default name in Unity. When you start any new project, fire one is already mapped in the input manager. So fire one represents a left mouse button and I think fire two is like a right click or something like that. Um, so here we'll say animator dot play and here we'll put in the name of our shoot animation, which is in, in this case is player shoot. Cool, save that off. We'll jump back over here and we'll run the scene and see what happens. Okay, so when we click, we've got Mega Man Spam the hell out of that. So that's fine. That's looking okay. So step two is to bring the bullet into the scene. So you can see here we've got a sprite sheet and here I've got a uh, bullet. So we're going to just bring that into the scene here. Change the Z index because it's sitting behind the background. So here we're going to Click add, add component and we'll add a rigid body 2D and we'll also add a box collider 2D, which will be used to kind of hit enemies and all that good stuff. Uh, so once we've done that, we want to create a script for this bullet and the script will tell the bullet that when it's loaded into the scene, it should fly. So with the bullet selected, click add component, new script. I'll call this one a very creatively named bullet script. Open that up in Visual Studio. Uh, so we'll want to reference the rigid body. So I might just make a reference to that. Rigid body 2D and RB2D, just a shorthand version of that, Ridge Body 2D. Oh, that's not right. 
and we'll here we'll say rb 2d equals get component rigid body 2d so when the bullet is loaded it'll quickly attach assign this reference and in the update function we will handle the movement so in the update we'll actually what we'll do we'll change this to fixed update because we are using physics, um, it's recommended to use fixed update because it's a fixed time step based on a frame-based frame, frame -based movement rather than the update, which when frames, if frames drop during the game, it might have inconsistent movement. So fixed update is the one to use. And we'll say rigid body 2D. We'll try add force. And we need a vector, so say new, Vector two, I'll give the force of, uh, let's say two, and zero for the, for the Y. So let's jump back to our scene. And so the first thing we'll wanna do now is bring this bullet into the resources folder of the project. And the resources folder is used to load stuff from and it must be named accordingly. So in your assets folder, go to create folder, and we'll call this one capital R resources. So Unity recognizes that naming convention and we'll look in that folder for anything that needs to be loaded. So here we'll grab our bullet and it will drag it over into our resources folder. Cool. So I might just move that up there for a moment. I'll keep that as a reference in the scene for the time being in case we need to tweak any of the rigid body settings or anything. Um, so jumping back to our player, now we need to get our player to load these bullets into the scene. Uh, so I'll create an object and we'll call it bullet ref. And in the start function, I'll say um, bullet ref equals resources dot load and what did we call it we call it bullet that's the name of the file um the bullet in the resources folder so here when the this um class starts we're going to assign this bullet ref from the resources folder and why we're we doing it here and not in the update function is so every time the bullet on um, the player presses the fire button, we're not loading a new fresh reference every time from the resources folder. So this will save us some um, memory, I suppose, or performance. So here we'll say game object um, bullet equals cast this as a game object. And we'll say instantiate. And here we're gonna pass in the reference that we created, bullet ref. Cool. So you can see what's going on here. We're, oh, that's a bad typo. So we're creating a bullet reference. We're, creating, we're instantiating a bullet based on the reference here. Uh, and the bullet dot transform dot position. And we might make a new vector, vector three. So X, Y, Z coordinates. And we'll say transform position x. So this is now we're telling the bullet where to start in the world, and we want to kind of position it around the player's hand. So I'm just going to try to guess a little bit here and say um, plus 0.4 and uh, transform position y. The pivot points of the players at the feet, so we'll have to say uh, plus two. And just for the Z, we'll say minus one to make sure the bullet appears above the background and all that stuff. And put F there. Uh, okay, so let's load this up and see what happens. Nothing's happening. And we have an error. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got a typo here. Look at that. Not Bulla. Runtime errors are the nature of game development, so get used to them. Oh, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. That's kind of cool. It's not really what we wanted, but that's, that's quite amusing. Okay. Very exciting. So a few things we'll want to do here. And this is why I left this bullet here. So if I can need to make some quick changes, I can. So a couple of things. In the rigid body 2D, we want to freeze the Y, Y position. So this means we don't want the bullet to drop down. We want it to stay in this location and go and not go which is what's kind of going on now. They're all just falling to the floor and colliding with the floor. So we don't want that. So we'll start with locking that off. So we'll just override this prefab over here, which changes the bullet in the resources folder. And we'll go back to our bullet script. And yeah, so something's going on with this add force. So what if we give this add force of 20 just for, just for the lols and see what happens. Boom. Zoom, zoom. So the the Y position is a bit off on the bullet. I might just change that. Um, but you can see it's kind of gaining acceleration, and that's to do with the way the physics are calculated. So it's adding the force. So what we might do, we might override all that and just give it a, a fixed velocity. So that means the bullet will just have out of the gate will have a velocity, x velocity of, oh, let's say new vector, yeah, vector two, and we'll say three and zero. Can I do that? Uh, I see, I see. Okay, so, Rigid body 2D dot velocity equals new vector two, X velocity of three, Y velocity of zero. We'll try that. So that's much better. That's kind of pretty much spot on with what we want. Boom, 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 boom. I like that. Bang, 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 bang. And you'll notice here, we're creating a bunch of clones of the bullet that are being loaded into the scene. That's a bit of a problem. We need to clean those up somehow. So let's do that now. So there's a few things we can do. So, okay, so what if we the bullet hits? Let's try something out. Let's create a, another bit of land here. We don't have a tag for the floor. So let's just give it a tag. Tag list is empty. Let's call this floor. Or oh, rather, ground is more appropriate. Oh, and call that ground. Uh, okay. Let's move that over here. So what I'm going to try to do is, so with the bullet hits the Ah, look at that. Yeah, see, the bullets are just staying there and the player's getting pushed back. That's hilarious. Wow. Yeah. I like little funny things like that, though. It's pretty, pretty good to watch. So in the bullet script, we're going to do a collision check. So we'll say on uh, collision enter 2D. And we'll say if... Collision dot game object compare tag Oops. and we'll say if this is ground then destroy the bullet destroy itself. Hopefully that works. Yeah, so that's 
you can see here, if you look in the um, scene view, scene manager, scene hierarchy rather, the bullets are all getting destroyed. That's cool. So what if we don't have a ground there? How do we destroy it? So what we can do, I mean, there's a few things, a few ways we can approach this. The simplest one would be to, um, maybe we can invoke a method after a few seconds that this auto automatically destroys the bullet. We'll try to do that. So we'll create a, um, we'll create a function here called, uh, called destroy self and in here we'll just copy and paste destroy an object you can even use this function in here just so it's a bit cleaner so what we'll want to do is the moment the bullet is created we'll invoke that method uh, so here we pass in the name which is destroy self and we'll call this after I was trying to think maybe after like half a second because the bullets are moving pretty quickly so just for your information invoke I'm just using this for the purpose of the tutorial um, it's not the most efficient way to de delay something you'll be you can use coroutines you can use third-party um, delegate classes from various tweening engines where you can do like delayed call and then call functions and stuff like that. But for the purpose of this instructional, the invoke will work just fine. And I have used the invoke in my own projects to some extent without too many um, issues. Pew. Okay, so look at that. So automatically, the bullets are getting destroyed. That's really cool. Guys, that pretty much sums up this tutorial. And in the next one, what I'm thinking of doing is bringing in some enemies and destroying those and maybe have the enemies flashing on impact or something like that, as you would see in the original Mega Man, and then maybe exploding away with a particle effect. If you found this tutorial useful, uh, please do like it and consider subscribing to the channel because I have heaps more game dev content coming up, uh, various little tutorials like this and some more meaty ones. So thanks very much, guys, and see you in the next tutorial.